Hi everyone, David here. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for coming back for another video. I um, hope you're doing well. I'm doing okay, even though it's kind of cold and windy today. I don't know what's happened. I thought spring is coming. The plum blossoms have bloomed. I went to see them today uh, in Osaka Castle Park. Very nice. Um, but yeah, it's a bit, a bit cold. Um, anyway, today I'm talking about uh, Osaka a bit more. As you know, if you've been following this channel, then I have been doing this kind of running project for the last two years, two years. Um, I've been trying to make the best 50 places to visit in Osaka Prefecture. People said it couldn't be done. Uh, Osaka's too small, doesn't have enough, um, but I'm gonna do it anyway. <laughs> I think I've got a good list, so uh, I'm gonna finish that off soon. Um, as you might know, if you've been watching the other videos, which have you been watching them? Because I think my numbers are quite low for those ones, so I really appreciate if you took a look now. Um, I've been going area by area because uh, doing all 50 in one shot would be insane. Um, so I've been doing the kind of regional regional blocks. Um, I've only got two blocks left. I've got the east of Osaka and uh, east, which way? I don't know if this is going to mirror image. Uh, east of Osaka and the north of Osaka, which is what I'm going to do today. So I'm going to take care of the north of uh, Osaka prefecture. I think I've done all the most of the ones for Osaka city already. There's a few more left to do. Um, but after I do that, uh, that's today's video and coming fairly soon, I think, will be the final part, part eight. And then I'm going to make this huge uh, masterpiece, uh, all 50, <laughs> all in one. I'm going to re-edit them so it's a bit more s smooth, so you don't have to watch through like an hour. <laughs> I don't want you to have to do that. I don't want to have to edit all that. I don't want to have to write the subtitles too. Um, so yeah, this is a perfect time to subscribe to this channel. I know a lot of people watching haven't subscribed, so please help me out. I would need the people. Um, like this video that would help me a lot leave a comment were there any places that you've never heard of before that you want to go to and also share this channel that would be great and also hit the little bell thing as well that will let you know that another video has popped out um that would help me a lot so please do that uh okay so that's enough for me i'm gonna go and uh hand over to my myself i'm gonna narrate my way through north osaka so please enjoy it see you in a moment so our first stop is this busy town. Uh, it's not usually busy, but at this time of year, this is uh, Mino. Uh, this is a town in North Osaka Prefecture and famous for the autumn leaves, um, usually around late November. They're called Koyo in uh, Japanese. Uh, so you can enjoy the traditional buildings, there's some temples and a uh, nice or ornamental bridge over there and some street food too. You can get uh, some like toffee apples and um, some cakes and things like that fried chicken and even oden which is a uh, kind of traditional stewed uh, bits and bobs i took a little step away from the crowds to have my taiyaki which is a kind of a cakey thing a fish-shaped cake uh, filled with some sweet stuff and uh, yeah of course you can enjoy the beautiful mountains uh, the japanese maple trees go really br bright red at this time of year and just have a you know enjoyable natural experience there's a few little hidden way sections too so you can find this little uh, Mononoke style, <laughs> little hidey hole, uh, very nice. But the main attraction, you can see it gets even more crowded as they get all concentrated at the end, is a beautiful waterfall. So this is Mino Falls. Uh, get a nice view of it from the second floor, little um, photo spot. Yeah, beautiful place. Um, definitely check that out. You can go hiking around there too and uh, watch out for some monkeys. There's a bug museum as well if you're into your bugs. Not me though. <laughs> and there's even a nice spa place. Um, it's called Spa Garden, Mino Spa Garden. Uh, so you can relax after walking around all day. And you can even try Momiji Tempura, which is tempura maple leaves. Uh, they're quite sweet and crunchy. Um, yeah, give it a try. Now you can go to Ikeda as well. Ikeda City is the home of the Cup Noodle Museum made by Nishin, which is one of the biggest cup noodle manufacturers in Japan. And you can see the history of their products over there. I've made a whole video about this if you want to check on my channel. Um, there's a nice a little museum as well. It's free to enter as well. You can uh, see the history of cup noodles. Nishin actually made the first uh, chicken ramen. Um, so it's the kind of groundbreaking instant ramen. Not the first chicken ramen, but the first instant ramen. You can see the um, a mock-up of his old garage, well, his old garden shed where he was making chicken noodles. Um, and you can even buy your own uh, cup, which you can customize and then um, fill up in the cup noodle factory. You can choose um, all the different kinds of flavors. So you can see it all get put in there. There's my customized pot there. And you can choose from all kinds of flavors, soup stocks, and um, yeah, customize your own, your own cup noodle. So definitely give that a try. It's 500 yen to make the cup noodle, but uh, free to enter the museum. 
And if you're feeling thirsty after that ramen, you can go to the Asahi Beer Museum. This is uh, one of the famous places in Suita City, uh, another northerly, um, northern city in Osaka. Uh, you can get a tour. Uh, I couldn't take any video inside, so um, I didn't. <laughs> um, but you can you can get a tour. Uh, they do have English tours as, as well, I believe. So you can check out this huge Asahi Beer uh, facility, uh, including some of the old buildings, this old uh, red brick building. Um, which has been here for yeah a long time. I don't know. I didn't take the tour actually. Uh, I will do it one day. So definitely check that out. Um, see all the pipes and tubes and uh, giant cylinders. I'm not sure what's are they full of beer. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, definitely check that out. I think the the tour has got a fee as well. Uh, so please check out. But across the road, you can even see the storage area. It's see all those Asahi beer bottles waiting for delivery. So yeah, please drink responsibly. Now, if you want a bit of history, you can go to uh, Takatsuki City. Um, so you can see this uh, Haniwa Museum. Now, Haniwa are kind of ancient uh, statues that were made uh, probably about 1500 years ago. Uh, you can learn about those in this kind of interesting manga if you can read Japanese. Um, but, uh, oh dear, <laughs> unfortunate shading on that one. But um, yeah, Haniwa were put on burial mounds and they signify people, animals, uh, houses in this case as well. And you can actually see uh, one of the uh, old excavated kilns where they used to make the Haniwa. And you can see some real ones. Uh, the ones outside are models, but these are the real deal. Um, yeah, so very part of uh, Japanese history. And you can see these big, uh, big covered thatched uh, things where they used to make the Haniwa. And also the kilns as well, uh, which were under thatched roofs and kind of put on these, on these strange slopes. So definitely check that out if you're into history. But if you just fancy a bit of shopping, you can go to Expo City, also in uh, Suita City. Uh, so a huge shopping mall. I'm not going to go through all that because you know what shopping malls look like. But um, yeah, shop till you drop, definitely. Uh, but it's not just that. We've also got the giant um, Ferris wheel. This is called the Osaka Big Wheel, I think it's called. Um, so you can check that out for about a thousand yen, I think. And get nice views of um, the park, which you can see there. This is the Expo Park. Yeah, Expo was held in 1970 in, in this area. But next to that big wheel, um, we'll come back to the park a bit later, we can see Nifrel, which is a special kind of uh, aquarium. I don't want to say aquarium, but it's a bit more interactive than that. So you can go and enjoy all the various colorful fish life. Um, there's more uh, emphasis placed on the aesthetic charms of the sea life. And uh, it's a bit more interactive too. So you can see these uh, like archer fish shooting down their, um, their food from those, the, that frame and you see all these different kinds of, uh, kinds of fish including these very fabulous, um, quite scary looking shrimp there we go, ooh, ooh, ooh. and uh, yeah some special displays as well about um, how different sea life evolves in different areas like dark, dark areas, so a nice little jellyfish too and um, uh, some other unexplainable <laughs> little rest area with a giant orb um, but it's not only fish, you can see, of course you can see a lot of fish, uh, this is a camouflage area. So you can see other kinds of animals too, like this chameleon. Um, I'm not, so that's why I was, wasn't sure whether to call this an aquarium or not. You can also see a tiger for some reason. Yeah, so there are a lot of uh, land creatures too. And uh, oh, watch out, here he comes. So you can see a white tiger, you can see some crocodiles just chilling out on the steps. Uh, you can see a baby hippo that was born fairly recently as well. Very cute. And uh, oh, some tortoises. Oh, is he gonna? Is he gonna do it? No, no, it's a fake out. Never mind. And uh, yeah, I see some odd-looking birds. Are they secretary birds? I'm not sure. I've been watching Agrets, guys. So I like secretary birds. And of course, some penguins. You need those too. Um, stinking up the place, but very pretty. And some lemurs hiding in the ceiling. I don't know if that's where they normally live. And capybaras and ducks together for the first time. A dynamic duo. Anyway, going back to the park, this is Expo Park, and uh, this was held in 1970, about 50 years ago. You can see the big Tower of the Sun over there. So if you cross over, this is a very large park and uh, very good for different times of year, cherry blossoms, autumn leaves. And the centerpiece is this Tower of the Sun with its two faces there, one in the middle and one on the top. There's actually a face on the back as well, um, the dark side of the sun. I forgot what the story is about this, but uh, yeah, it makes me feel uh, 
bit intimidated. And you can actually pay to go inside. Um, you have to book in advance. You can see the mysterious fourth, uh, oh goodness me, the fourth face underground. Um, this was refurbished for entry for the first time since the expo actually, it opened about five years ago. You can see the tree of life inside, uh, designed by a famous Japanese artist whose name totally escapes me right now, <laughs> never mind. And uh, yeah, that's it. So go to Expo City, explore North Osaka, not just the downtown. Um, so I hope you enjoy that. Let me pass back over to myself. Okay, thank you. Okay, welcome back. Thanks for watching uh, to the end of this video. So I hope you enjoyed that. Like I said, there's one more part coming soon-ish. I don't know exactly when, but it's um, the east part of Osaka. That's the, the last part of the, the puzzle. After that, I'm going to do my big grand uh, 50 part uh, jigsaw puzzle and uh, let you all know. So please like this uh, channel, please subscribe, uh, share it to all your Osaka loving friends and um, also hit the bell so you know next time when I, I release another video. So, okay, I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you very much for watching and uh, supporting this channel. We're moving into the second year now, so I might do an anniversary thing soon. Um, I'm probably a bit too late for that already. Um, but thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.